Hi, I'm Life Coach Sean Griffiths, and I'm about to give you a really important short presentation. I'm really passionate about this subject of comfort zones, their boundary, and why we find it so hard to step outside our comfort zones. And it's so important because it can change our lives. And it's the way we look at failure, comfort in the modern world, and the way our brain works, which actually stops us getting outside the comfort zone. And that stepping out might be a big goal, a big dream you have, but it might also be something small. Go for a, a run in a group. Maybe you want to buy a house. Maybe you just have trouble stepping outside your house, speaking in front of a group of people, or maybe just speaking up in your family. There's all these things outside your comfort zone, which might change your life. And it might make it more exciting and fun. And I know in this presentation, I'm going to help you move forwards out of your comfort zone if you want. And the other reason why it's so important is because in our 20s and 25 and 30s, we are always stepping outside our comfort zone. We go to college, we are meeting new people, we are pushing ourselves forwards, find a new career, a new house, then we settle down. And sometimes our comfort zone, we don't step outside it anymore. And the comfort zone contracts as we get older in our 40s and 50s. But it's so important to keep pushing that comfort zone out and stepping outside the comfort zone because it makes life fun, more exciting, and it makes our life bigger. So I hope you enjoy the presentation. Have you ever been nervous to put your name down or volunteer for something or stopped yourself doing something you always wanted because you were afraid of failing? I'm going to dive into and explore the edge or event horizon of your comfort zone and why you find it so hard to step across that line and also why even imagined failure is stopping you moving forwards towards your goals and dreams. In the next few minutes, you'll start to recognize why you avoid putting your foot outside that comfort zone, even if you want that result so badly, it would change your life. And with that knowledge, you'll start to step maybe sheepishly over that line in the sand you've drawn for yourself and change your life. Now, if you can find somewhere to write or jot down a few sentences, it would be very useful. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and it really will make a difference to the presentation if you write things down. Because if you keep it in your head, it distorts and changes. There's something about getting it down out into the real world, which makes a concrete difference. So the first question, what's outside your comfort zone? Pick one thing, small or large, and just write it down. Just jot down a sentence about it. How do you feel about stepping outside your comfort zone? Just one word, nervous, anxious, um, comfortable. One word, just write it down. And most importantly, on a scale of one to 10, where one is easy and 10, no way, it's hard. How difficult or easy do you see stepping outside your comfort zone? That one thing you thought of, just write it down. Okay, so we'll come back to that later, but for now, onwards with our journey. This is my main presentation, and I'm going to cover three areas. Our ancestors' brains, society's expectations, and comfort in the modern world. Our animal brain, our ancestors' brains, had one important duty. It was to keep us safe, and it did that by giving us negative feelings. If you can imagine... Uh, prehistoric times, there's a group of people, a tribe sitting around a fire in a cave, and then they hear a twig snap outside the cave entrance. One of those members gets up and he's thinking, oh, that sounds interesting. Oh, fun. And he's feeling curiosity. He goes outside and then he gets eaten by a saber toothed tiger. He's not our ancestor. The people in the cave cowering around the fire are our ancestors. They're feeling nervous, afraid, anxious. And that's because their animal brain is giving them negative feelings to keep them safe and in position so that they don't move, don't go outside their comfort zone. However, the animal brain is still there, but it's not fit for the modern world. In fact, if I go outside my flat here in London to go and get a coffee, I'm probably not in danger. 
but I, my animal brain is always looking for danger and it's always giving me negative thoughts about all sorts of things. We have thoughts like, it won't work. Why am I bothering? People won't like me. So what is one thought you're having about your goal and stepping out of your comfort zone? Just one sentence. Just write it down. And how do you feel about that thought? One word, uncomfortable, anxious, just write it down. And just as an aside now, our tribe, those, those people sitting around the campfire, um, we have this inbuilt desire to be in society, in a group, because in those prehistoric times, if we were thrown out of the group, if the group chucked us out, we wouldn't survive. We'd be going out into the savannah or jungle on our own and we'd probably die. And our animal brain still thinks that's the case. So it gives us these thoughts and massive feelings to stop us leaving the tribe because it thinks there's something wrong. So if we don't get many likes on Facebook, we make it mean something. We have a thought about it and then this huge feeling about it because we want to be part of the tribe because it thinks, our animal brain thinks we're in danger if we're not. And the other thing about feelings are they're just vibrations in your body, a raised heart rate, tensing of muscles. And in fact, a feeling can't kill you. And when you realize that and recognize that and really take it to heart, the world is yours. So on to the second thing, society's expectations. Failure is bad and to be avoided. That's what we're always told from childhood onwards. Don't fail. You've got to succeed. And in fact, our great innovators and great, great leaders actually had a different outlook. Edison, who was asked by a reporter how it felt to fail 1,000 times when inventing the electric light bulb, he said, I didn't fail 1,000 times. The light bulb was invented with 1,000 steps. And it's his outlook, his thinking and his feelings about failure which meant he was failing forwards. He was learning, he was experimenting and he kept moving forwards. But sometimes failure is what keeps us inside our comfort zone, the fear of failure. How do you see failure? How do you feel when you fail? And why do you feel that? And does it serve you? So onwards to the third uh, part of our presentation or mine, uh, comfort. Comfort in the modern world. Modern expectation is to be happy or content. We see it in the movies, we see it in magazines, we see it everywhere. And in fact, if I asked anyone in the street, what's the aim of your life? They'd probably say to be happy. But that puts negative feelings into, into some area where we feel we shouldn't feel negative feelings, nervous, anger, fear. We try and push them away because we think something's gone wrong, but actually it hasn't. And some of those feelings can have huge energy to move us forwards. Nervousness, we'll study to achieve. Anger, it's great passion. There's huge amount of energy there. And just to say, there's nothing wrong when you have a negative feeling. And in fact, life is 50-50, half negative and half positive, and it always will be. My experience. Even doing this presentation now, my animal brain is shouting at me that, oh, people won't like it. Why are you bothering? And I'm having feelings of anxiety, nerves, big feelings. But actually, I take that to mean those feelings, to mean that I'm moving forwards. It's exciting, fun, and I'm curious about what's going to happen. And in fact, it's proof. It, it's proof that it matters to me. The worst case for me is that satisfaction is the satisfaction of a worthy fail, a failure which moves me forwards, a learning failure. This is a so much bigger feeling than not trying. I'm striving to live my life to the full and not let negative emotions stop me. So in summary, our animal brain is not fit for this modern world. It's making you afraid to keep you where you are. It thinks you're safe when you don't move. It doesn't want you to do something new. It's trying to give you way out of proportion feelings so you feel huge negative emotions if you try to do anything outside your comfort zone. What we want most in life 
is often on the other side of fear or nerves. And when we recognize that anxiety, shame, or embarrassment can't actually hurt us, the world is ours. And we need to recognize that failure is not a backward motion, but a forward one. And there is nothing wrong with negative emotions. It's society which has programmed us to think we should think positive thoughts. So when you absorb and understand why you feel the way you feel, you start to think differently about your feelings and maybe start to consider putting your foot outside your comfort zone. So the big question, do you decide to escape fail, fail ahead of time, so not take action, not follow through on commitment, stay confused, give up, make excuses and justify inaction? All because you are avoiding feeling a feeling which can't actually physically hurt you? Or do you decide and choose to have a worthy fail where you take action, even if you don't get the desired result you expected or wished for? Are you willing to feel any feeling, positive or negative? Because you never know, you may even succeed. And how would that feel? Okay, back to measurements. On a scale of one to 10, where one is easy and 10 is impossible, how do you now feel after the presentation about stepping outside your comfort zone? Has it changed from before that number? Even a little movement down can change your life, especially in just eight minutes of a video. Take fear with you and be afraid. Do it anyway. It can't hurt us. Don't believe your animal brain or society or our glossy magazine images of our need to be happy and comfortable all the time. It's all in our minds, and so it's all within our power. Your true self, your future self, the one living life to the full, that future you is sitting outside your comfort zone. They are standing in or have gone through the discomfort zone and have even learned that there is nothing dangerous about standing in the discomfort zone. They've learned to enjoy challenges. Just step out of your comfort zone because the world is out there waiting for you. It may be scary, but that's when you know you're alive. If you'd like to explore your comfort zone boundary, then book a one on one mini session with me. And please click like and subscribe and share this video because by sharing, we can improve people's lives and make the world a more colorful, fun and exciting place, one session at a time. Thank you.